Hi guys, Yasas que Carlos Sainz out to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're making stuffed artichokes loaded with Mediterranean flavor. They are very, they're very elegant to serve alongside any main course. You can serve them as an appetizer. That's basically how I would do it because everybody can just pick out, pick off the leaves and eat that delicious filling that's going to have kalamata olives, feta, roasted red peppers, sun dried tomatoes. There's going to be so much flavor in this. It's totally worth every minute of effort that's going to be put into making it. Let's get started. So when you're choosing artichokes, you want to make sure that they're a little bit on the heavier side, that the leaves are as close together as possible. Try not to get ones where the leaves are open and it's feeling kind of light because then that means that the artichoke is going to be dried out and old. Once you get it home and you're ready to use it, um, put on a pair of gloves. I normally don't cook with gloves on, but this really does um, dirty your hands really quickly because you're going to have to get out the choke and you'll see right now what we're going to do. So with kitchen scissors, you're going to want to cut off the tip of each leaf. That's where the thorn was. They've, there are usually not any thorns on them by the time you bring them home. But this part is not edible anyway, so you want to get rid of it. It's almost a third or half of the leaf if you look at it. Go all around. And when you get to the pointy part right here, take a very sharp knife and just cut that part off. About an inch or so is what you're cutting off. This part is not edible at all. So you're not wasting anything. And then these bottom leaves, you also want to peel off. Maybe the first two, three layers. You can just get those off. And then you want to pry it apart so that it opens up a little bit because we have to take off these purplish leaves that are in the center and right underneath those, there's the hairy part known as the choke and you want to get that out too. So if you pull it apart and open it, it's going to be much easier to get that center part out. So I like to do this using the back of a spoon. I go in and I kind of dig underneath all around where that uh, purplish part looks. It almost looks like a tulip in there. See a lot of the choke already came out. This is the choke. It's the hairy part that is not edible. And I guess it's called the choke because it makes you choke if you eat it. <laughs> My son was joking the other day when I was making this, and he said, I guess if you take out the choke, then all you're left with is the arty. <laughs> I don't know. I thought that was funny. Okay, it's much easier to take it out with the back of the spoon, and then you can go in with the part of the spoon that you actually eat with and just take out all of those hairy bits. So once you have all that hairy choke out, then you're going to go ahead and cut the stem off because we're going to lay them flat and we're going to fill them just because it looks so pretty. But the stem is edible, so what you're going to do is just peel off the edge. Um, go, just go ahead and peel off all around this very fibrous part. And you could just do that with a paring knife or a peeler. Better if it's not serrated. I'm using the serrated one because that's the one that I had closest to me. And I'm just going to be very careful with it. And I'm also going to cut this little bottom part of the end. Then you want to have plenty of lemons on hand and a bowl of ice water that has lemons in it. So I've, I've already prepared these two artichokes over here. Every time I, before I uh, put one in there, I just go ahead and I just rub it and just drizzle or pour or squeeze a lot of lemon juice all around it because artichokes like to oxidize really quickly and this helps them, helps slow down that process and keeps them nice and green or as green as possible for as long as possible. You also want to have a pot of water that's steaming hot, ready to come to a boil. I'm going to go ahead and prepare this last artichoke and then we're going to move on to the next step. 
So you want to bring a pot with a few lemons in there and some water to a boil. And then we're going to put the artichokes that have been cleaned and prepared into this pot. Just like that. And any stems that you've prepared too or that you've taken out, you just want to put them in there too so they can cook. We're also going to season it with a little bit of salt. And try to turn them around so they're um, bottom side up. If they fit. Otherwise, if they're sideways, that's fine. You can go in and then flip them around halfway through. It's going to take about 25, 30 minutes for them to cook. You're going to want to reduce the heat down to a medium low and let them simmer for about 25 minutes. They're ready when a fork that's inserted into the back of the artichoke where the stem was um, comes out easily and it feels really nice and tender. Then you're going to want to take them out and then lay them upside down so all the water can drip out of them. While they're cooking, I'm going to move this pot to the back and we're going to prepare the filling. But first, I have to clean up. So for the filling, I have a cast iron skillet, the same one that I'm going to put the artichokes in there to roast in the oven, which is another point. Make sure that the oven is preheating at this point at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I have a bunch of scallions that I've cut up. So the recipe um, on, on the blog post is going to be for four artichokes. And it says that you need about three to four scallions. I think I put about six in here. I love the way scallions taste in this filling, so I always tend to put a little bit more. So it's up to you how many you want to put. You're going to need about a quarter cup of olive oil on them and a little pinch of salt. And it's just going to take about two or three minutes for them to warm through and just to soften a little bit. You just want them nice and soft. That's it. And it's going to help release their flavor. They're going to be slightly sweet and so delicious. Now, if you don't have a scallion and you want to make this recipe right now, just use an onion. Finally chop a small onion and cook it until it's nice and soft and golden and that'll work. So while the onions are cooking, I have three roasted red peppers from the jar. I'm just going to chop them up, just going to dice them up. Bite-sized pieces is what you're looking for because you want everything to be really nice and small so that way it fits in between the leaves of the artichoke. So you just cut a few cuts lengthwise and then you go across. Now I'm going a little bit heavier on the ingredients and I don't I also don't mind that there might be a little bit of filling left over because you can use this filling to fill mushrooms or any vegetables. You could even use it on a, uh, as a topping over shrimp or something like that. Then I have some sun-dried tomatoes. I like to buy the sun-dried tomatoes that are packed in oil because they're so tender and sweet. They melt in your mouth when they cook. They're smoky and sweet and slightly chewy. And again, we're going to cut those into little tiny bite-sized pieces too. And you can kind of lay them on top of each other. That will go fast, quicker. This is a very rustic dish, so it doesn't have to be perfect. If you get some bigger chunks, no big deal. And then I have some pitted Kalamata olives. They're going to add a nice briny bite to the dish. We're going to roughly chop those too. Okay, these are ready. And then go ahead and grate five or six garlic cloves. I already have frozen garlic that I, that I just get a big container of garlic and I puree it in the food processor. I put it in a Ziploc bag, flatten it out, and I always have it on hand. So it's about a heaping teaspoon, it kind of looks like it. I don't really measure garlic because in my world, the more garlic, the better. So you're just going to want to warm it through. Now the thing about cast iron skillets, they are heavy. So let me grab something. Here we go. Something that's going to help me lift this thing. When garlic is grated, it really needs just a few seconds because it can burn super quick. Take it off the heat. So now I'm going to add the onions, the olive oil, and the garlic to the breadcrumbs. I have two cups of panko breadcrumbs here. And I'm just going to toss everything together. And I'm going to add the, the bell peppers, um, the sun-dried tomatoes, and the kalamata olives in here. I'm going to add a heaping teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon and a half, of dried oregano. You don't have to use oregano. You can use parsley. Fresh parsley would work too. I'm also going to add a little pinch of crushed red pepper flakes for heat. 
Look at this beautiful pepper mill. Demi Calivas sent this to me and I thank you so much. This is beautiful. I'm gonna grind some freshly cracked black pepper on top of this. This is made in Greece, by the way. <laughs> and I'm gonna add a little pinch of salt. I'll just do a teaspoon, even though there are two cups of breadcrumbs. The olives are salty and we're gonna add feta cheese to this. And that's also pretty salty. But you can taste as you go and adjust the seasoning. This is already smelling incredible. Now we're gonna need a nice big block of feta and you can put as much feta as your heart desires in this and just crumble it in just like this. We've talked about it a hundred times already. Do not buy crumbled feta. It takes a few seconds to crumble it yourself and it tastes way better than the crumbled kind. Give everything a mix. Taste it and if it needs more salt or pepper, go ahead and add it. But that's it, this is the filling. This filling is amazing in anything, like we said before. I'm waiting for the artichokes to finish cooking and then we're gonna put it all together. So once the artichokes are ready, again, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the bottom part is fork tender, that's where the heart is and then you're gonna take them out, put them upside down so that way a lot of the water can drip off of them. Then I have two cast iron skillets. You can use a nine by 13 inch baking pan. I just, I think they look really pretty, especially if you're serving them for a dinner party um, to use the cast iron skillets. But you can definitely put them in, in a nine by 13 inch baking pan. I put a little bit of water, maybe a half an inch of water in there. That's gonna help them cook a little bit more in the oven. So now what I'm gonna do is, I put them in the skillet, I'm also gonna put the little stems, cause these are very flavorful. So first you start off with the center of the artichoke and fill it generously. All the way up to the top. We'll do each one, we'll fill the centers first. Oh, this is smelling incredible when the hot, artichoke gets filled with this filling. All of the, the herbs get activated that are in here, all of the flavors, and it just smells so much better than even it did before. Okay, and then you're gonna go and you're gonna fill in between the leaves. Now, if you want a little bit of stringy pull in the filling, you can add some uh, shredded mozzarella cheese. That would be nice too. So I'm gonna continue filling these and then we're gonna move on to baking them. Okay, so the artichokes are stuffed and ready to go into the oven. My oven is preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. These are gonna bake in there on the center rack for about 40, 45 minutes. You're looking for color on the top part of, of the artichokes on the filling. If they don't get golden brown, you can turn on the broiler for a few minutes, but keep a close eye on them so that way they don't burn. You want the tops to be nice and crispy and delicious, and I'll show you what they look like as soon as they come out. The artichokes took almost an hour to bake in my oven, but every oven varies, it's different. Some ovens have hot spots, some go just a little bit hotter than others, and some are a little bit not as hot as others, so just keep an eye on it. You're looking for that beautiful color, you want the breadcrumbs to get nice and toasted, and all the little bits of feta on top too, they're gonna taste so amazing. Let it sit at room temperature for about 15 minutes before you serve it, so that way everything can settle and it won't be steaming, piping hot. These taste amazing at room temperature, by the way, so if you're doing them for a party, it's great to make these ahead of time because you just put them out when they're room temperature and it'll be fine, or you can warm them through about 10 minutes or so in the oven and it'll be good to go. Just look, the, um, the leaves should come off super easily, just like this, they should literally just lift out that's how you know it's ready. I'm also gonna cut into one to show you what it looks like on the inside. These are too hot for me to eat right now. They haven't settled down a little bit, so I'm not gonna do the taste test today, but I can't wait till I do. I also have to take pictures of these for the blog. 
I know, but later on, you better believe we're going to dig into these. Let me cut into these so I can show you what the artichoke heart looks like. But basically, you put these out on, as an appetizer, and everybody can take a few leaves and just munch and talk, and it's just going to be the perfect little party food. I think you guys are going to love it. The exact measurements are on the website, www.dimitrosdishes.com. Make sure you go on over there to check it out, check out the recipe. Leave me some comments down below and let me know what you want to learn how to make next. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me today and I'll see you all next time. Yes, us.